You're looking at our exclusive live Doppler radar tracking this newest storm. Will it mean more flooding or just enough to get your feet wet? You'll hear the very latest coming up next on Early Edition. Today's rain was just an appetizer, the main menu yet to come. Also ahead, Consumer Reports takes the fear out of car shopping. Find out how to negotiate the best deal and get the lowest price in a live report. Yeah, an elephant makes a big poop. A mouse takes a tiny poop. You heard right. It's part of a series of books that is selling like crazy. Do they help parents explain things to young kids? Good afternoon, I'm Kelly Brothers. And I'm Sarah Gardner. Channel 3 reports the early edition next. It's 4.30 p.m. and you're watching KCRA-TV, where the news comes first with Kelly Brothers and Sarah Gardner. Weather with Shelley Monahan, home of Michael Kidd and Live Copter 3, and Northern California's number one news team. This is Channel 3 Reports. Rain started falling in Northern California this morning, and this may be just the beginning. A look at our exclusive live Doppler radar shows where the rain is coming down right now in the first wave of what's expected to be a major winter storm. Our storm watch coverage tops the early edition today. The National Weather Service has issued a winter storm warning for the Sierra tonight and tomorrow. In fact, the Weather Service is warning that snow and high winds may combine to cause blizzard conditions in some parts of the Sierra. Here in the valley, the rain has been fairly light so far, but it is expected to become heavier later on. And that has state water officials watching the situation very Given closely. Given all the right conditions, we could have significant flooding in certain areas. We could have nothing. Um, it could be a, a river-based high water event that's contained within the flood control systems and we don't have levee problems. It could be an urban streams flooding event. It just depends on how the storm systems move across. Do they move quickly? Do they park at some point and stall out and really dump a lot of water in one location? Thanks to a nearly dry February, area rivers and creeks are still well below the flood warning stage. Well, keeping a very close eye on the weather situation is our own Shelley Monahan. She joins us now live from the Channel 3 Weather Center with a look at our exclusive live Doppler radar. Shelley? Well, thanks, Kelly and Sarah. Right now, we are seeing a bit of a break in the action as we take a live look. This is the 75-mile range map. Some widespread showers continuing over portions of the valley and on up into the foothills. Most of the Sierra, at least below 6,500 feet, reporting rain, not snow. As I mentioned earlier, though, this is just the beginning. We have a series of three different systems headed toward northern and central California over the next couple of days. We'll show you satellite imagery and let you know about what is yet to come. The heavier rain, the gustier winds, and the heavier snow expected to move in later tonight and tomorrow. All right, Shelley, we'll talk with you in just a few minutes. Thank you. In the O.J. Simpson case, homicide detective Tom Lang was back on the stand for an eighth day. And he was grilled about this conclusion that the murders were not drug-related. Johnny Cochran again pushed the defense theory that the killings were a hit by a drug cartel that specializes in throat-slashing killings called a Colombian necklace. The target, according to the Simpson defense, could have been family friend Faye Resnick. Cochran said she was abusing drugs and was put into rehab just before the murders took place. Did that change your opinion about this possibly being a drug-related uh, killing? If I had that information, uh, that would probably be a consideration uh, if I had no other direction to go. Despite the tough questioning, Lang stuck to his story that all evidence pointed to O.J. Simpson as the killer and no one else. The lengthy questioning of Lang delayed testimony of Officer Mark Furman at least for another day. But the judge did issue an important ruling about Furman. To bring us those details, Channel 3's David Gregory is live for us in Los Angeles. David? Well, Sarah, a partial victory for the defense. They will be allowed to ask Furman about statements he allegedly made about Nicole Brown Simpson's breast before she died. The defense thinks he might have had a personal relationship with her that might have made him biased against Mr. Simpson, but the defense cannot use or ask him about allegations that he had Nazi paraphernalia at his desk. All of this, of course, will come out when Furman finally does take the stand, which could happen tomorrow. Well, it could be another exciting day. Indeed. All right. Thank you, David. Kelly? A jury today convicted a South Sacramento teenager in the shooting death of an ice cream truck driver. 17-year-old Paul McIntosh had said that he was innocent of the killing of Ron Beer Bounsel. He testified that a local gang leader pulled the trigger but forced him to take the blame. 
The jury didn't agree, but also didn't believe that the killing was premeditated. So it convicted McIntosh of second-degree murder only. He faces now between 15 years and life in prison. In Modesto, a team of experts investigated the source of a carbon monoxide leak at a fruit and nut processing plant. Six employees of the ConAgra plant became ill last night. They went to the hospital complaining of nausea, headaches, and dizziness. They have since been released, but the plant remains shut down until crews can pinpoint the source of the problem. In Washington, the cornerstone of Republican welfare reform efforts is on its way to the House floor. The Ways and Means Committee today approved the plan. It replaces the cash welfare program with block grants to states. It also reforms child support enforcement and ends public aid to most legal immigrants. Is outspoken high-profile high House Speaker Newt Gingrich in danger? Some security experts say the answer is yes. The new Republican leadership has already taken some steps to protect the man who best symbolizes the Republican Revolution. Steve Handelsman reports the latest from Capitol Hill. What sets Speaker Newt Gingrich apart is his in-your-face style. I am a genuine revolutionary. They are the genuine reactionaries. We are going to change their world. They will do anything to stop us. Again today, protesters disrupted an event where Gingrich was set to appear. Five arrested by Capitol Police. And Gingrich kept to his schedule. On Monday, members of the same group disrupted a conference preventing Gingrich from speaking. And he fired back. What I heard about uh, struck me as an organized, systematic, paid demonstration by people trying to blackmail the taxpayer. He's feisty, but security experts worry Gingrich is making himself a target. He's more outrageous. I, I'd worry about uh, individuals of both the right and the left in persuasion who are extreme. At first, Gingrich waved aside suggestions that he take on tighter security, but not anymore. Now he arrives at the Capitol in a specially equipped truck, like the ones used by the president's protective details. Here, at least two security agents guard the speaker. He lives just a few blocks from the Capitol, but after years of walking to work alone, Gingrich has security for his stroll. It's 24-hour-a-day protection. Three shifts of uniformed and plain-clothed Capitol Police. Also, security tighter in sections of the Capitol where the speaker works. Some Democrats are peeved. At the time that we're cutting safe uh, and drug-free schools money, right. to upgrade the security of the Speaker of the House is inappropriate. Actually, security's tighter everywhere now near the Capitol. Staffers have new high-tech ID cards that could be used to monitor who's where on the Hill. It's not Newt's idea, but it's still part of the Gingrich-era security crackdown. Speaker Gingrich has received death threats. His security people won't say how many. I'm Steve Handelsman, NBC News, Capitol Hill. Voters have given Stanislaw County Library support right where it counts. They overwhelmingly approved Measure C, which increases the sales tax one-eighth of a cent. That's expected to provide more than $4 million a year for 13 Stanislaw County libraries. Speaking of books, there is a children's series so popular that local stores have a hard time keeping them in stock. Originally published in Japan more than 10 years ago, they have been in the U.S. now for just over a year. And as Channel 3's Lisa Breckenridge reports, they teach kids about bodily functions. Everyone poops? You want to read that one? Yeah. What's this? Two and a half year old Jessica Phillips is getting the scoop on poop. An elephant makes a big poop. A mouse takes a tiny poop. Different animals make different kind of poop, different shapes of co different colors, even different smells. It's just one in a series of popular Japanese books on bodily functions now being sold in the United States. The holes in your nose. When you catch a cold, there's more moisture than usual. It becomes mucus and drips out. Beverly Phillips says Jessica seems to get the picture this way. It's easier to explain to them when they have pictures in front of them and camels. Huh? Yeah. Is that a camel? Yeah. You, you can find these books in the section that deals with growing up for children. But if you want them, you should be patient because they have a tendency to fly off the shelves. Every other week we're putting in a sizable order, so they are very popular. In fact, today the most popular one is sold out. Right at the moment, we don't have the gas we pass. I think they're good and bad. Dr. James Margolis, a child psychologist, says the books are appropriate for kids two to five years old in a supervised setting. Now, I think it would probably be good for the average kid who's going through toilet training, uh, but I think if a, if a child is really hung up with toileting, 
it might fixate them a little too much on it. And since Jessica's at that age, her mom says they just might help. What did the camel just do? In Sacramento, Lisa Breckenridge, Channel 3 reports. Guess they're lucky they're not scratching stiff books. <laughs> Very funny, Kelly. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, whatever happened to the term number two, anyway? I don't know, but we got along just fine without those books <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> An alert today about a popular birth control method. Find out more details when we return with more news. First, we'll return to our top story this latest blast of winter weather. Shella gives us another check of our exclusive live Doppler radar. Plus, a look ahead to tomorrow coming up next. And the weather situation is causing grave concern in one seaside community of California. The very latest when the early edition continues. I'm Alicia Malaby. When Channel 3 reports tonight at 5, it's a lot easier to get a traffic ticket these days. Find out what cops are cracking down on and if it's making your street safer. Then a delicacy found in Russia and Iran is now being produced right here in Northern California. These stories when Channel 3 reports tonight at 5. This portion of the news sponsored by Raley's and Bel Air Markets. We feature USDA choice beef, corn-fed too. Lots of deep through corn-fed beef flavor. If you want high quality fresh seafood, you don't have to come out to the coast. You just have to shop the seafood department at Rayleigh's and Bel Air. Our seafood is taken from the boat, packed on ice, and delivered to our stores fresh six days a week. From salmon steaks to snapper fillets, from cod to sole, we've got the same quality you find at fine seafood restaurants. So when you're hungry for the freshest seafood you can buy, go fishing at Rayleigh's and Bel Air. Attention minivan buyers. Ford has authorized $1,000 cash back on Windstar. Plus, if you own a Chrysler, Plymouth, or Dodge minivan, we'll give you an additional $750 more when you get a new Ford Windstar. That's up to $1,750 in cash back you can put towards a Windstar lease. Now, just $269 a month for 24 months. $1,000 cash back plus $750. That's $269 a month on Ford Windstar. See your local Ford dealer today and prepare to be impressed. Finding someone to service our air conditioner was like finding the right family doctor. If you ever have a home cooling problem, call Duke McAlpine at Park Mechanical. We wanted someone we could trust. Park has been serving Sacramento since 1911. Who knows what they're doing? We passed the Lennox Quality Dealer Standards Program. Someone who really delivers. Delivers? Instant cash back with trading or select systems from your participating independent Lennox dealer. Lennox, one less thing to worry about. See what's up on Ricky Lake. Hi. If a buddy won't quit butting in. I don't want her involved in my relationships. I don't butt into your relationship. Just say don't go there. Amy, get the hell out of our oh, way. Do you guys don't even have sex? The ultimate butting into your relationship. The reason why I'm not sleeping with you is because I'm sleeping with someone else. <laughs> Is it a friend's right to start the fight? I'd love to see how this one plays out. Find out on the next Ricky Lake. Thursday at 2.30 on Channel 3. Lots of concern in the Ventura County community of La Conchita today with more rain expected. And with the rain, of course, comes more mud. Dozens of families are out of homes after a wall of mud swallowed houses over the weekend. Literally, a mountain is inching its way toward the tiny seaside town where the once, once picturesque streets are now filled with sandbags. Officials have declared the county a disaster zone and residents are eligible to apply for government relief. Authorities say that a new deluge could take out another 20 homes, if not more. And it looks as though rain is headed for our part of the state here in Northern California. Shelley, just how bad does it look at this point? Well, we're just receiving word now, the National Weather Service just issuing a new special weather statement within the last five minutes or so. Now, the second storm system is expected into Northern California tonight and tomorrow. Out of this next one, we could see anywhere between one and two inches of rain out of it here in the valley floor. But what they're saying now, with periods of rain expected off and on between now and the weekend, we could see rainfall totals here in the valley anywhere between three and five inches. Now again, we're not saying this to alarm you. We're simply telling you this information to alert you to the possibility. Uh, Mark and I were talking earlier this afternoon and there's definitely the possibility of localized street flooding. Right now our rivers and creeks can take plenty of water thanks to a very dry February. Let's go outside and check our current temperatures. Sacramento, Modesto, and Stockton all extremely cloudy. 59 in Sacramento, 60 degrees both in Stockton and Modesto. Sunrise tomorrow morning, 640. Sunset this evening will be at 557. Doppler radar 
radar throughout the course of the afternoon kept very busy as this first system, although relatively weak, moved through. What we're seeing now, a live look on Doppler, kind of the calm before the next storm. And again, this secondary system is expected to be quite a bit stronger than the one that moved through earlier today. Extremely windy conditions also associated with this particular storm. You can see the upper low, how it's coiled itself up off the coast of California and Oregon. That is going to continue to pump moisture into our state, at least now through Saturday. Also want to mention to you that there is a winter storm warning in effect for the Sierra. They're expecting extremely gusty winds and heavy snow only at the higher elevations. Snow level right now is running between 6,500 and 7,000 feet. So only the higher elevations right now seeing the snow. Elsewhere, they're seeing the rain. Winds over the higher peaks could be between 60 and 80 miles an hour as the night progresses. But Kelly and Sarah, the secondary system, and especially the third one, which is due in late Friday and on into Saturday, will be watching closely. We'll have more on this storm system, give you an idea as to exactly when the heavier rain tonight should hit, coming up at 5 o'clock. All right, Shelley, thank you. A warning issued today about a contraceptive used by 9 million women worldwide. The World Health Organization says the drug, Depo-Provera, can double the risk of breast cancer in the first five years of use. But the study also finds the contraceptive may protect against the disease in the long run. Researchers say the findings shouldn't necessarily restrict use of the drug, but that women should be informed about the risks. Another new study confirms what many have long suspected. The body's own metabolism works against a successful diet. The study says dieters often fail to keep off weight because their bodies become more efficient and burn fewer calories. Researchers found that overweight people lose pounds, their bodies need considerably less energy to meet their needs, than do people who've always been a smaller size. Well, if you're planning on buying a car, Consumer Reports is one of the best places to get information. Now there's a brand new service to help out. We'll explain and show you how to negotiate for your best deal. That's coming up. We'll also show you one place where the marriage license may come with a warning sticker. But first, a look at what's hot. Can you believe The Lion King sold 20 million copies in less than a week? I was graduating from college, I had to get ready for interviews, and to be honest with you, I was fat. I was a size 16, and that's when I decided to go to Jenny Craig. Now I feel great. I went to the mall, I get into this dress, and I zip it up, and I start to cry. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just put on a size 8. Now at Jenny Craig, lose all the weight you want for just a dollar a pound. Call 1-800-39-JENNY today. That's 1-800-39-JENNY. And now I feel as if I can go out and get any job. Beauty on Ice, in the world's most important figure skating competition, the World Championships, beginning Friday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on NBC. NBC Wednesday, Cosby's back with more mystery. He's dead! More action. People are trying to kill me. More fun. <laughs> you forgot the secret knock? So shoot me! Just an expression. And more Cosby. Cosby Mysteries returns NBC Wednesday, 8, 7 Central. On Rescue 911, a peaceful camping trip takes a deadly turn. This is like the worst possible nightmare. Rescuers take to the air. There's no way he can live. To locate a wounded hiker. Then, a driver's car won't start. And when he looks under the hood, he gets the shock of his life. Holy cow, get away from the car. This is an alligator or a crocodile. Oh, I think we have a little problem. On Rescue 911, Wednesday at 7 on Channel 3. On the next cops. Well, the reason I stopped you is I was kind of wondering why you sat through a green light down there. A driver's suspicious behavior gets her busted. I don't know, probably meth. It wasn't mine, it's not in my car. Now her boyfriend is going to let her do the time for his crime. We got quality kind of a guy who lets his girlfriend take the fall for his drugs. Any way you slice it, she's going to the slammer tonight. On cops. Wednesday at 7.30 on Channel 3. Buying a car is the second biggest purchase that most Americans make in their lifetimes, and there is no question that car shopping can be overwhelming because there are so many different choices available. So how do you get the car that's right for you at the best price possible? We have a special guest in our newsroom today, the Technical Information Manager for Consumer Reports, Abby Herzig. Abby, thanks for joining us today. 
We've, we've been featuring Consumer Reports now for a few months, and people seem to enjoy the, the stories, but undoubtedly, your sort of information would come in most valuable in car shopping because it can be so intimidating and overwhelming. Give us some tips. Well, the car buying process has become very complicated because of the complex marketplace. There are now hundreds of models with a variety of features and options, and it's really not as difficult to buy a car as it may sound if you just follow three basic steps. And the first step is to narrow down your choices, to consider how much you want to spend, how many passengers you need to carry, uh, look at the size of vehicle, and basically narrow down the choices to which vehicles you're interested in. Many people do this by visiting dealers and collecting information from dealers, but dealers might be likely to tell you about the cars that they want to sell. You can get objective information about this by consulting Consumer Reports' annual auto issue, which will be on the newsstands later this month, or by calling Consumer Reports' 1-800-AUTO-INFO, which is a phone-based information service intended to help buyers decide which car is right for them. Is that issue your most popular issue, by the way? Yes, the it auto is? issue is our biggest selling issue. I can imagine that. What's step number two? Well, the next step is to test drive the cars. Once you have the the field narrowed down to a few cars that are likely candidates, go and check them out. Many people think about test driving a car as just being to take it out for a spin around the block, but that's not really enough. With the average price of a car being over $20,000, and this is the biggest expense for many people, and you're going to be living with the, the result of this for quite a long time. So you really want to check out the car and make sure it's something that you can live with. Uh, drive it, make sure it's comfortable. Can you get the seat into a comfortable position so that you don't have serious blind spots? Can you reach all the controls while you're driving? Yeah. Uh, how comfortable is it for you to use? And also use it the way you would. For example, if you're going to be putting a car seat in the back seat for a small child, actually try to put the car seat in there and see how convenient it is to get in and out the back door and make sure that the car is really right for you. Okay, so you've done that now and you've settled on, on the type of car you'd like to buy. What's the final step? Negotiation, well, obviously. Right. Well, now once you know which car you're going to buy, mm -hmm. you need to negotiate a, a deal that's the best deal that you can get. And to do this, we recommend that you get a listing of the dealer invoice price for the car. You can get this by calling Consumer Reports 1-800-AUTO-INFO, which will give you a list of, for the car and all its options, what the dealer paid for the car and what he's asking for it. And you can use that to negotiate up 